Meat Boy is back, and today we are making kofta. I mean, to me, it sounds like it's spelled in a Russian way, but I believe it originated in the Middle East, and I've also seen the Greeks make it. It's really just spiced ground beef, like schlonged sh onto a skewer. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. It's great for grilling, barbecue, a nice change of pace, even on the carnivore diet, and it's traditionally served with like pita bread, different vegetables, yogurt, various toppings. So it would also be great for a party platter. Let me show you guys what the ingredients are. Now you might see a Greek style kofta with lamb, mint, all different types of herbs served with yogurt. You could see a Middle Eastern one that has sumac, a bunch of different spices, also served a different way. I'm going to show you guys what my favorite spices and seasonings are and how to do that. So. We have some 93.7 lean ground beef from Frankie's Free Range Meat, salt and pepper, and I like coconut aminos with thyme, onions, and garlic. I'm using the aminos so that, you know, when we blend these three up in the food processor, they kind of emulsify and form a paste. You don't really need the coconut aminos, but they do add some salt, sweetness, and a nice flavor. So we're basically going to blend up two cloves of garlic and onion and some thyme with the aminos and then we'll throw the meat in and season it. So we'll put in one onion peeled, three peeled garlic cloves, I don't know, maybe like five tablespoons of coconut aminos, quarter cup, pinch of salt, some cracks of black pepper. Now if you do happen to buy fresh thyme, it is a, a pain to deal with because you have to peel the leaves off each individual sprig and the way you do that is you hold it and you go down and the leaves come off with your finger. All right, so that's all I have the patience for. So there we have it, basically like a seasoning soup. So now I'll put in our two pounds of ground beef and blend it back up. Now traditionally, I think they'll actually grate a lot of these ingredients on like a box grater and then mix them in by hand, but this definitely speeds up the process. Now I'm gonna let this sit for five or six hours before we grill it. And honestly, if you were serving this to other people, I would definitely leave it in the fridge overnight to really, really let those flavors develop. It's gonna taste a whole lot better. So after a couple hours, your meat mixture is gonna become very pungent, potent. It's, it's gonna smell much stronger. And that means the bacteria, the spices, the herbs are all working together to add a lot more flavor. And here I have some uh, stainless steel barbecue skewers. I think I bought these because uh, I used to like cooking a lot of stew meat on the grill and this was really easy. So I've never actually done this, but it looked easy enough. They took the, yeah, I didn't think it was gonna stick that well, but I guess it does. So you take the meat and as we said earlier, you schlong it onto the skewer or not. So I guess we're gonna have to, I guess, I guess this is a lot easier if the meat is colder. This has kind of been at room temperature. Yeah, I'm, I'm like 100% sure if the meat was cold here, we wouldn't be having this issue. So definitely do that first, but let's see if we can make this work. Now I've seen, I've seen these in all different types of shapes. I've seen them very thick. <laughs> God, what a horrible joke. I, I've seen them very thick. I've seen them very thin. <laughs> but you can make it however you'd like. All right, so there we have it. I'm almost tempted to cook this in the oven and see if it sticks together, but let's go out on the grill and say a little prayer. All right, I forgot to film it, but I basically just flipped this over onto the grill and I'm definitely afraid to move it. This is already falling apart, actually. I'm gonna cover this for like maybe five, 10 minutes and see how it comes out. All right, I can hear it sizzling away. Okay, so that's not bad. I actually just threw the meat in the freezer. I thought I was gonna have to remake this with colder meat. So if you do manage to get the lukewarm meat on the grill, you can cook it, it'll solidify on the skewer, but I highly recommend keeping the meat in the fridge or in the freezer for a little bit so it solidifies and, and this is a lot easier to do. All right, let's see if we can take this off. All right, there we have it, not too bad. So this smells incredible and hey, I think I did a pretty decent job. Uh, obviously, as I said several times, make sure the meat's cold. So this is normally served, as I mentioned earlier, with pita bread. Uh, you could use tortillas, some vegetable croupermants like raw onion. Uh, it's usually garnished with 
parsley as well as lemon juice and I've even seen it served with yogurt. Uh, so keep in mind this isn't really meant to be eaten on its own although if you are carnivore yeah I'm sure it's delicious. Oh man this is so tasty way more flavor than a meatball because it's on the grill. So delicious. The sweetness from the coconut aminos. Yeah, I'm probably gonna eat both of these. This is really good. And if you have some picky eater kids, give this to them with some like tortilla chips and yogurt. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully I've showed you a delicious recipe that can help you make yourself as well as your families and friends that much healthier. If you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, you can go to frank stefanocom to support me through all of my businesses. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.